The story unfolds in a cozy English town called Kensington. At a house, a taxi pulls up, and the inhabitants scurry around, packing their bags for a much-anticipated vacation. Amidst the commotion, a young girl named Tabitha scurries to her pet mouse Roddy's cage. She pours some tasty treats into his dish and rushes out of the house. As soon as the coast is clear, Roddy dashes out of his cage, thrilled to be free. He gleefully bounces around the house, playing with his toys and reveling in his newfound freedom. Roddy hops into a toy car and zooms around, making stops at various locations to complete the tasks on his to-do list. As the day wears on, Roddy decides to take a break and watch a movie. He carefully picks up a doll and drives his car to the perfect viewing spot. One fateful night, Roddy was jolted awake by a strange noise. He quickly grabbed a toy soldier and went on a mission to find the source of the sound. Suddenly, a mysterious creature popped out of the kitchen sink and landed behind him. It was a sewer rat named Sid, and Roddy was puzzled as to how he got into the house. Sid seemed to be in no hurry to leave and cozied up on the couch to watch TV. Roddy was concerned and worried that Sid would make his life miserable. So he pretended to be friendly and offered to take him to a jacuzzi. Sid was delighted, and Roddy led him to the bathroom. But instead of a jacuzzi, Roddy tricked Sid into believing that the toilet was the jacuzzi and asked him to jump in. When Sid realized Roddy's trick, he flew into a rage and pushed him into the toilet bowl. Roddy pleaded with Sid not to flush him down the drain, but Sid was determined to get rid of him. He sent Roddy down the pipes and back into the sewers where he belonged. Roddy was terrified as he landed in the sewer, surrounded by slimy slugs. He scampered away as fast as he could. Suddenly, he heard an odd noise coming from a tunnel and thought it might be a way out. He dashed into the tunnel, but tripped and fell onto a drawing of a London skyview. A rat who had been drawing the picture scolded him for ruining it. Roddy was shocked to learn that he was in a sewer city called Retropolis that was designed to look like London. As he explored the strange place, he found himself whisked away on an amusement ride that took him to a man struggling to move a royal guard statue. Suddenly, a man yelled that someone was going to open the floodgates, and Retropolis would be destroyed. Roddy was frightened, but he managed to find a police officer and asked for help to get to the surface. A food seller overheard their conversation and directed Roddy to the captain of a boat called the Jammy Dodger who could help him. The food seller accompanied Roddy to the boat, and Roddy thanked him before setting off on his journey. As Roddy boarded the ship, he was suddenly caught by a robotic hand and taken to meet the ship's captain, a tough-talking rat named Rita. Roddy begged for her help, but before she could answer, some unwelcome guests arrived, and Rita ordered Roddy to hide and stay quiet. As they hid, Rita explained that she was being pursued by some vicious rats who wanted something from her. But Roddy accidentally sounded the boat's horn, revealing their location. The evil rats quickly captured both Roddy and Rita. One of the rats, Spike, demanded a ruby from Rita. She tried to escape, but another rat, Whitey, caught her and held her upside down. That's when Roddy had a sudden realization the ruby was in Rita's back pocket. Spike retrieved it as Whitey let him go. The rats took Rita and Roddy to meet their boss, a toad. Spike handed over the ruby, and Roddy told the toad he was from the surface. The toad showed off his collection of royal family treasures, but Roddy made a careless comment that offended the toad. As Roddy tried to back away, he accidentally knocked over some items, setting off a domino effect that destroyed the entire collection. The furious toad took Roddy and Rita to a freezer and froze his enemies with liquid nitrogen. Spike and Whitey placed Roddy and Rita in a cup, but they managed to escape using a paper clip. The toad opened the freezer and realized that his own rats had been frozen instead of his enemies. Roddy and Rita took the gem and made a run for it. Rita used the room's master cable to zip line out of the building and make their escape. As they made their escape, Roddy clung onto Rita for dear life, and they landed on a pipe. Rita used the master cable as a belt and jumped off the pipe, landing gracefully on the floor. Roddy followed 
but not so gracefully he hit his groin several times before landing on the ground. After losing track of Rita in the town, Roddy stumbled upon her boat and accidentally discovered that the ruby was a fake. When he broke it easily, Rita got furious and attacked him, explaining that the ruby was supposed to change her life. But then Rita became sad, and Roddy apologized and promised to get her a real ruby if she could help him get back to the surface. Rita agreed, and they shook hands on their deal. As the toad talked to his tadpoles, his hench rats entered the building. He asked them if they had found the master cable, saying he needed it before the World Cup final. Rita and Roddy arrived at her house, where she was warmly greeted by her siblings and relatives. Roddy watched from outside as Rita had fun with her family. Rita's mom invited Roddy in for dinner, and they all enjoyed a meal together. Later, Rita's dad pulled her aside and warned her that the journey to the surface was dangerous. But Rita assured him that Roddy would pay them for their services. Roddy helped out by taking some dishes to the kitchen, but he overheard Rita discussing plans to leave him behind. He was hurt and angry, so he impulsively stole the jammy Dodger boat and set off on his own. However, the boat broke down after a while, and Roddy was left fuming as he tried to fix it. But then, to his surprise, Rita appeared on the boat and explained that it was her brother who had made the plan to ditch him. She made Roddy sit on a rubber duck and grabbed a rope attached to the boat to move them forward. As they sailed, Roddy sang a tune on his guitar, and Rita listened intently. Using the mechanical arm, Rita brought Roddy back onto the boat. He confessed that he wasn't eavesdropping earlier, he was simply admiring her family, and realizing how lucky she was to have them. Rita forgave Roddy for stealing her boat, and instructed him to remove the barnacles as a way to make amends. Spike and Whitey caught up with Rita and Roddy, and they began chasing them relentlessly. Rita maneuvered the boat at high speed as she tried to outrun the goons. Using a frosty whip, she managed to trap one of them, but the others kept on pursuing them. Thinking on his feet, Roddy instructed Rita to steer the boat into a tunnel while he grabbed a giant balloon and blocked the tunnel behind them. But Spike and Whitey were determined to catch up, so they popped the balloon and continued their pursuit. Spike even launched himself onto the jammy dodger and tried to attack Roddy. But Rita engaged the boat's turbo, and they shot off at breakneck speed. The elastic rope holding Spike finally reached its limit and dragged him off the jammy dodger. He slammed into a pipe and careened into several objects before landing on his own boat, which capsized. Rita and Roddy continued to speed along the tunnel walls, dodging obstacles and even another boat in their path. Spike and Whitey returned to the toad, who was furious that they failed to retrieve the master cable. He tried to catch a fly with his tongue, but his French cousin Little Frog arrived and effortlessly caught it. The toad ordered Little Frog to retrieve the cable from Rita and Roddy, promising to use it to flush away the rats. He even shared a story about how he was once Prince Charles's pet, but his butler had flushed his rat friend down the toilet while the prince played with his new pet. As Roddy and Rita enjoyed their meal together, Roddy realized he had accidentally cooked maggots instead of rice. Rita kindly complimented him, and they chatted as they washed the dishes and prepared for bed. Rita asked Roddy if he had any family, and he lied, saying that he had relatives who he had fun with. They said goodnight to each other and went to sleep. The next morning, Rita woke Roddy up with her boat's horn and told him that they were getting close to Kensington. The frog and his goons caught up with Rita and Roddy on the boat, demanding that they hand over the master cable. They hinted at using it during the World Cup final, where England would play against Germany. Roddy lifted a fly into the air, and the goons tried to catch it with their tongues but their tongues got tangled. Rita managed to tie their tongues to a branch, leaving them dangling over the water as the boat continued to move. However, the frog managed to break free and attack Rita in an attempt to get his hands on the master cable. Eventually, they reached the rapids, where the current was so strong that it dragged their boat into a tunnel. The boat plunged down a giant pipe, but the mechanical arm managed to hold it up. Despite Rita's best efforts, 
the frog managed to retrieve the master cable and push the boat into the water. Roddy and Rita chewed on some ropes to release a parachute, which they used to float out of the sewer. Rita managed to retrieve the master cable from the frog, and they soared into the sky. As they floated, Rita asked Roddy where his house was, and he gave her directions. They maneuvered through the air and entered through the chimney, finally arriving at Roddy's house. Despite being thrilled with their victory, Roddy realized that the jammy dodger had been destroyed during their escape. Feeling guilty, he took Rita to a room where he gave her a real ruby and an extra gem to help rebuild the boat. Rita hugged him and asked for a tour of the house, saying that she wanted to meet his family. As Roddy showed her around, she noticed his cage and realized that Roddy was a pet who didn't have a family and was all alone. Sid walked into the room, and Roddy tried to pretend that Sid was his brother, but he eventually admitted the truth. Rita reassured him that he was still her friend, and they enjoyed the rest of their time together. As Sid leaves with a doll, he insults Roddy, calling him a loser. Rita tries to comfort Roddy about his lack of family, but he insists that his home is a palace and that he can do whatever he wants. He asks Rita to leave and sets out to get rid of Sid. In the living room, Roddy sits next to Sid and drinks water. While drinking, he realizes that the toad intends to flood the sewers during halftime of the World Cup final using the master cable to get rid of the rodents. Roddy arrives in Metropolis and uses a balloon to reach Rita, who has been captured by the toad and his goons. The toad plans to flood the sewers with water during halftime of the World Cup final using the master cable to get rid of the rodents and repopulate the city with his tadpoles. Roddy and Rita try to escape, but the toad captures them. They are tied up and thrown into a cage, where they see other rodents who have been captured by the toad. Roddy and Rita work together to freeze the goons using liquid nitrogen, and they trap the toad on a pipe. However, the toad captures Rita, and Roddy uses the frog's tongue to save her. A huge wave of water approaches, but the liquid nitrogen freezes it, saving Metropolis from destruction. The toad and the frog get stuck to a gear and Roddy suggests to Rita that he becomes part of the new Jammy Dodger crew. They rebuild the boat, and Rita dances with Roddy and her family as they sail away. Meanwhile, Sid is left in the house, and Tabitha returns with a pet cat, scaring Sid. The story ends with Roddy and Rita's friendship stronger than ever as they sail away in their newly rebuilt boat, ready for new adventures. The moral of the story is to embrace new experiences and unexpected friendships but to do so with honesty and integrity. Avoid trickery and always strive to make amends for any mistakes you make along the way.